to another Nugger You Film Review. Where we no. Nugger. Nugger. Fuck you, you. Ah, that's <laughs> within 30 seconds. <laughs> wow. They got us. Uh, where we hot dog and grandstand about a film. This time, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, as it's pronounced by French teachers in 2001 in <laughs> Dublin. As chosen by our bra, Andrew Busey. Nugger, you bra, of the highest order, who requested it. A terrible use of money, sir, but we appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back for a return bout is your brash babbling boy, Jay Hunter. Our valorous vagabond, V1. That's a crack. And our mortal masochist, Matthew. Hello. There's no great joke there. I don't know what you got. <laughs> um... <laughs> um Matt, did you watch this film back in 97? You bet your ass I did. Uh, Because the first one, aka the good one, was 15, I believe. And this one was the rung below that. And I was allowed to watch it. I saw the advert on Sky Movies. Believe in better. That better is Mortal Kombat 2. I'm like, (laughs) oh my god, there's a Mortal Kombat 2. Oh, oh, dad, 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 please tape it. I think I had to do some chores for him to tape it. Because that would have meant back in the day... If you wanted something taped on that, you couldn't watch anything else. Yeah, you can't change the channel. Either he would have switched the TV off and done something else, or he would have watched it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember watching this. Like, I didn't even know it was coming out, so we just kind of dropped Mortal Kombat 2. What the fuck? You know, watched it, and then I was like, whenever Sindel showed up, which is probably, you know... It's pretty early 14 in the movie. seconds yeah. into the movie. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> There's a bit where she starts twirling, and I was... I. So I've never finished the film. You know, that was it. Wow. Yeah, that was it for me. What about you? I didn't see it in the cinema. I don't know if it even came out into the cinema. I did see it on VHS. So being the Mortal Kombat fan that I was, I probably would have fought someone saying it's not that bad. But um, I was stupid. And it is. (laughs) (laughs) Spoilers, it isn't very good. It is infamously terrible. What happened? (laughs) Let's get you up to speed. Mortal Kombat Annihilation Retrospective Mortal Kombat 1 was an unexpected success, budget of 18 million, brought in over 122. Everyone, who's up for round 2? Mortal Kombat 1's director Paul W.S. Anderson was asked to return. He declined because of how difficult the day-to-day job was, working with producer Larry Kasanoff, who owned the property, constantly butting heads, just didn't want to go through it again. But he went and made Event Horizon instead with uh, Morpheus and Sam Neill. Yeah. Great film. Excellent yeah. movie. Oh, yes. Actually, there's another bit where he's like, I didn't want to do it because there were so many problems, but we managed to escape from them in the first film. And like, this film hit all of those. <laughs> <laughs> so who would direct? In a pretty cool move, producer Kasanoff promoted a lot of the original MK1 staff. For example, the production manager, you're now the line producer. The biggest being the original movie's director of photography, John Orr Leonetti. You're now the director. He'd done bits before. He was the assistant director on films including Commando Ooh. and Poltergeist. Ooh. But this was his first gig as the main guy. Kasanoff later recounted, Having a first-time director, it was a big mistake not having everyone else around him being a veteran at their job. So instead here, everybody's learning their new role on the fly as well. Since the first movie was popular, you had a lot of people coming out of the woodwork demanding payment slash recognition. That was my <laughs> idea. I created this. The most notable was JJ, Johnny Cage's stunt double from MK1, who got promoted to play the masked ninjas Scorpion, Cyrax, Noob Cybot. Get over here! He badgered them for a line in the movie so he could get a SAG card and transition to be an actor. And okay, fair enough, Kasanov gave it to him. And very next day, JJ came up to him and Kasanov was like, oh, he's going to say something nice to me and thanks for getting me a a part and helping me get my card and all that. And he turned around and demanded more money. Because now he has a SAG card? Yeah, to be moved to the hotel with the rest of the real actors and get a suite. (laughs) (laughs) So he said they shot that day and then fired him. Wow, okay. He ultimate warriored his boss. 
Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> he went Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this shoot was more ambitious, filming in studio in LA and in Thailand again, as well as in Jordan, with a budget of 30 million, up from the first 18 million. Released November 21st, 1997, to an IMDb of 3.7. That's very generous. And a Rotten Tomato score of 2%. That's too low. <laughs> <laughs> Let Mortal Kombat Annihilation begin. Okay, I'm going to need your help for this because I can get through like the explanation of the rules and then this film <sighs> just, I don't know. I was kind of stunned because I watched it twice for this review. Yeah, <laughs> I, same here. I, I like, it's a barrage and I'm speechless with it. Yeah. Uh, Jay, I've watched it about 16 times. Just pick a random number out the air. And I still had to watch it and just flick through it today and go, yeah, I remember that bit. I remember that bit. I remember that bit. Okay, cool. What is happening? <laughs> well, we're going to tell that, I'm sure. Okay. Mortal Kombat Annihilation starts promisingly enough with Techno Syndrome. It's the same song, same song, same song. It's the same song as the first film. Shiva. Striker. Gloomy, overcast, typical Irish weather. But it's the outworld merging with the Earth Realm. I do love how upfront it is. Roll call of who's returning for MK2. No hiding. Okay, Robin Shu as Liu Kang. Yes. Bridget Wilson as Sonya. No. no. Lyndon Ashby as Johnny Cage. No. Christopher Lambert as Raiden. No. <laughs> None. Talisa Soto as Katana. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's two out of five. Oh, well. That's... Is that a passing grade? No. 40%? 40%. Depends on the course you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why didn't you pay for them? Why anything? Money. <laughs> they literally didn't think most of them were worth it. Producer Kasanov had to deliver a film by mid-1997 because midway, they're bringing out MK4, TV Network has a TV show, live tour going across the country. Take One Cog Out has a ripple effect. Getting the movie made was the most important. <sighs> so playing Sonia is now Sand Sandria. S A N D or E A? Sandra! Sandra! <laughs> <laughs> playing Sonia is now Sandra Hess from NC No Man. Raiden is James Remer. Yeah, uh, fucking Dexter's that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Ajax in The Warriors. And Chris Conrad as Johnny Cage. Which I thought looked great, look he, just like him. He's the ringer. I, mm. I actually thought that it was him until I paused it, went on to the internet and found <laughs> out that it wasn't him. I was like, ah, yeah. so all generic white guys do look alike. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He plays Johnny Cage, Asterix, easy payday as they write him out immediately. Wow. He was one of the highlights of the first movie. Like, I, uh, did they not watch the movie and know this? They just didn't want to pay him. That's it. Uh, all the reviews are praising more combat for Christopher Lambert, Johnny Cage, Shang Tsung, and the good special effects. <laughs> They're all gone in the opening scene. <laughs> Who's that jumping out the sky? <laughs> Ninja jobbers. Oh my god. The green screen is insane. It's oh, so bad. I, I was like. Rotten. We are literally seconds into the movie and this is like the fourth red flag. <laughs> it's like, Sonya, the, the flag is waving. Mm. Johnny Cage, the flag is waving. Raiden, the two <laughs> flags waving. Him and his wig. <laughs> yeah. and, and then CG ninja men falling from the sky. Oh my God. Seconds in, lads. Why does everyone have this crazy like magic Green. marker outline? As well? It's like really bad yeah. composite. Yeah. Did you need to CG the sky... Yeah. Oh. How are you getting on, Matthew? We're like 15 <laughs> seconds into the movie. Right. It's like, all right, well, Shao Kahn wants to merge the realms. Outworld will now be this world and Earth realm, and we'll just make it look like someone's adding oh. Ribena Cloudy to the sky. And then there we go, they're merging. It looks rougher than a badger's ass. 
Uh, Halloween costume Motaro. <laughs> Shiva. Ermac. Cormac. Cormac, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sindel. And holy shit, why ball me Shao Kahn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was thinking in a Mortal Kombat 1, you got this gigantic inhuman specter growling warnings. I'll come for your soul and MK2's B-movie jaw man. It's your man who played the judge in Buffy. Oh, very good. The, the fucking blue lad that his gimmick is, no mortal weapon <gasps> can destroy me. Oh. And then Buffy goes, ha, huh? but you come from a time of swords and whips out a fucking bazooka. And yeah. I was like, bam, season over. <laughs> What's that do? Uh, this is uh, Brian Thompson. You might know him as a street punk from the start of Terminator 1. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I know him as um, the alien bounty hunter in uh, The X-Files. Oh, he shows very him. He's very good. scary. He's got the uh, barcode thing on the back, and they're like, what does this mean, Scully? I'm like, I don't know, but it's The X-Files, so it'll probably be never mentioned ever again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so explain yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> what about the rules? There are no rules. <laughs> Uh, okay, from Mortal Kombat 1, it's a once-a-generation tournament, Earth just won one, so yeah, we're sorted for nine generations, yeah? Outworld Emperor Shao Kahn cares not for rules, he's just gonna invade anyway, tough titties. Kahn's impatience leads him to enact a plan that's over 10,000 years old. I'm a slow reader myself. <laughs> uh, he, he enlists the powerful sorcerer Shang Tsung, aren't you dead, mate? And his dark priest to resurrect his dead wife, Queen Sindel, but in Earthrealm rather than Outworld. Resurrecting her in the Earthrealm has allowed the Outworld portals to open, allowing Khan to invade. Kicker to get Raiden off the sidelines and into the fight is this merging of Outworld and Earthrealm. It diminishes his power into roughly a tournament fighter. Mm. Also, a ticking time bomb, the merger will be complete in seven days. And as a thumbs up, the only thumbs up I have here is this is the exact plot of Mortal Kombat 3. Ah. Like the attract screen. Yeah. This is it. But it's also... That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. In the original film, if you don't know anything about Mortal Kombat, it sets it up in the first few seconds. Haha, I killed your brother, Liu Kang. <laughs> I dare you to do anything, you little fuck. Um, and so you set it up pretty much, you know what's going to happen. And this is not quite the same, especially when he goes, The Earth Realm will be joining with the other realm in seven days, and I, I was in X Files. <laughs> <laughs> not quite the same but they were better days <laughs> please don't fire me <laughs> lads Sandell <laughs> her intro to this movie uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a worse intro uh, <laughs> to a character in any medium in the history of mediums <laughs> so she fucking comes out Braden Walker hands on her hips <laughs> And goes, knock knock. Who's there? Braden Walker, and I'm gonna knock your brains out. Too bad. You must die. Uh, that's the fifth red flag. <laughs> <laughs> We're like a minute into the movie. <laughs> Liu Kang says to Raiden, but I thought us beating Mortal Kombat One prevented this exact scenario happening. And Raiden <laughs> just goes, eh, and shrugs his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I thought our victory in Mortal Kombat closed both portals. What closes can also open again. What is that supposed to mean? Our heroes bail and regroup, deciding that they should all split up on their own mini-quests. Uh, Lou and Katana and Raiden and Sonya. Did you enjoy the uh, magic gerbil balls they used to get around? <laughs> can you feel the power <laughs> of an atmosphere? <laughs> I just love that <laughs> game in Gladiators. I was like, Lou and Katana, sure, you get the sexual tension there, but it's just... There, uh, there is no yeah. tension here. There is, he's terrified to go nearer <laughs> in case he gets slapped with a fucking lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, it's such a cheap excuse for Raiden to rub up against Sonya. It's uh, like, God of Thunder, he's just a creep on a bumpy train. <laughs> <laughs> First fight, Liu Kang and Katana versus Smoke, the first of the Cyber Ninjas. Sorry? 
It's not explained in the film, but evil clan, the Lin Kuei, decide to automate their human assassins into soulless machines. They chose their four top guys. Cyrax. Yellow. Sector. Red. Smoke. Grey. And Sub-Zero. Blue. To be turned, Cyrax and Sector say yes, but Sub-Zero and Smoke refused, which saw them excommunicated. Smoke is captured and is turned anyway, and the three bots are hunting down Sub-Zero. I thought this plot was absolute dog shit in Mortal Kombat 3, but I thought they saved it, did an amazing job in Mortal Kombat 9. Yeah, and they actually did a very good job in the Mortal Kombat Legacy show, which was the YouTube uh, Mm -hmm. show that came out like 2011. 2011, okay. Yeah, and they had an episode on these lads and it was fucking awesome. Awaiting Phase 2 commencement. Begin. Phase 2 sequence initiated. Who saves the lads from smoke? Sub-Zero! Not the original one, but his bro, who's happy to help our heroes. Played by Keith Cook, he's Japanese-American at least, as opposed to John Turk, (laughs) a white American from Chicago (laughs) in Mortal Kombat 3. It always pissed me off, because like the Lin Kuei, centuries-old, ancient guild of Chinese assassins, John Turk from Chicago. (laughs) Uh, By the way, Mortal Kombat 3, Sub-Zero and Kano, John Turk and Richard Divizio, are both in The Dark Knight. Ooh. Oh. Falcone, he's having dinner. They're both there as the heavies in the background that turn and go, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's funny Amazing. you say that because I know him as Quan Chi from Mortal Kombat Mythologies. Oh. So zero, yeah. We don't speak of The Dark Times. <laughs> oh, I love that. The, the, the game where it's like, you know what? Everybody in every cutscene should have that. Thing that makes your voice talk like this so you know you're in Outworld. You know. <laughs> Quan Chi, tell me, what about our payment? Oh yes, I, I almost forgot. The bones of your arch nemesis and leader of Scorpion's ninja clan. Did you like the song that plays during this fight with Smoke? Fucking Scooter with fire! 1990s Germany going mental here. That's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Scooter loves you. Back in Ireland, 10,000 beats per minute. Scorpion shows up and himself and Sub Zero have a crap fight. Yeah. Uh, brightly oh lit. Oh my god, the screen. The, it's, uh, it's, once on, yeah. again, it's like watching Raw, just the screen is shaking and camera cuts. Uh, just hire martial artists and let them do fake kicks, mate, you know? Man, the slow motion wire work they have, oh. it's insane. Oh my god. And the fucking foam bridge that just like wobbles <laughs> oh. like mental. The actors must have been terrified on it. Like, I do like the idea of using your powers to make an ice bridge. And he does like an um, ice duplicate and that he jumps out of, which I, is I did like that. out of MK. But it's just the execution of it. Like the show, the, it's shit. <laughs> 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 Everything about the film. Like the yeah. look of it, it looks so cheap. I don't get it because they're in Thailand and they're shooting in these centuries old ruins. Like you can't. Like, you couldn't recreate that in the studio in LA. This yeah. is a, How does it look so shit? It doesn't make any sense. It probably costs that much to turn the sky into purple. <laughs> it was all <laughs> <on> the sky. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, if this film came out instead of MK1 two years ago, it would have set back video games like 15 years. Too bad you've already paid for it. Suckers! <laughs> Suckers! Sonya's mini quest is to locate her partner Jax, who's decided to not get arm implants, but more of a super suit arm overlay. Because, like, you know, he's on the, what do you call it, the... Gurney. Yeah, he's lying down, so I thought he'd go, gotten implants, but after, you know, half the film, he just pulls them off. So they're just, like... Exosuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, they give him four times the power. They're excellent. Mm-hmm. Oh, you stink! You suck. Four out of ten. Scene. Cut that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's rated higher than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> the 
They're ambushed by goons and Cyrax. <sighs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Major Briggs, Sonya Blade, Shao Kahn will be pleased. Shao, what? Yo, I take it this ain't something we can talk about. Watching Cyrax doing these ridiculous kind of trampoline flips, generic upbeat techno, and the quick cuts. Like, I was just wondering if you had the raw footage, could you fix it? Mute the colors, change the music, longer takes, cut out most of the hokey jumps. Not fix, fix, but like improve. 30%. Why are there so many jumps in the movie? Like, other than some of the really wooden acting from certain characters, it's the flippy jumps. And they do it over and over again, and they all look shit. And it's like, at no point in the year and a half or so that it took to make this movie, did they sit back and watch a scene and go, oh, man, these jumps, man. We need more of these. <laughs> <laughs> Cyrax, how are you at jumping? <laughs> yeah, Sector, are you good at jumping? Fuck. See, I've got to make a confession. It's this scene that for years I was convinced this film was good and I never questioned the fact that it wasn't good. Jax, some dude from Ring Gladiator shows up and he's like, uh-oh, here comes some really rough-looking cheap ninjas <laughs> oh, and also Cyrax. Well, lots of people here. All right, all right. Let me help Sonya by throwing a dentist chair. That'll help. Cyrax sees it coming because he's a cyber ninja and he's very clever. And... He decides to do the moonsault Charlotte Flair flip just as the beat drops in the song Two Telephone Calls and Air Raid by Sean Imray in slow sure. motion. So it's like, Sonia, watch out. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's the... As a kid, I was convinced that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Oh, wow. It was up Cinematography. There with- <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hitchcock who? <laughs> <laughs> Sonya wins the fight by giving Cyrex the old 4 forward back back block. They finish the scene with uh, big Jimmy Bennett jump in front of an exploding green screen. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> there goes the driver's license. There goes the driver's license. Who are you? Wouldn't you like to know? So you're Raiden's prodigy. I've seen better. The whole film is exposition. Uh, It's a million short scenes with cameos coming thick and fast. Difficult to keep it straight. Like even explaining the film would take longer than the film itself. Nightwolf drops in. A fucking state of him. Uh, like brand name versus great value like <sighs> thinking of predator uh, you know billy you know <laughs> sexual predator <laughs> <laughs> uh, he tells lou to find his animality it's dan dan up sweet range <laughs> scantily clad jade tries to seduce lou who has none of it Ha-ha, it was a trick to test your devotion oh, i was like that's a big red flag for a relationship Imagine your missus sends down some tramp to try seduce you. And it was a trick to see if you were actually loyal to me. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah. Heel pretty heat. much, pretty that much. That would be good if it's like, hi, I'm the other, other ninja. Slag. <laughs> <laughs> you are even more pure and faithful than I heard. You have passed the test, Luke King. Bitch, what the fuck? Sonia and Jax are Pearl Harbored by Melina. Oh, did you like the old um, sexy uh, mud fight? Uh, sure, yeah. It, it, it was a thing that happened in the movie. You can tell that this is like a boy's movie, you know. Oh, we're going to get the lady and get them all covered in mud and the lads will love that. They might give us a 5 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Sonia exclaims, Katana? It's a nod to Melina being a clone of Katana. But they don't use Katana. She looks nothing like her, by the way. Why didn't you yeah. use Katana's actress? Yeah, I just put her in a, in a purple pink getup, yeah. you know? And it's like, how do you know it's the evil version of her? And she points and goes, too bad you will die. <laughs> <laughs> and this crappy looking beast who is dispatched in seconds after being punched in the butt by Jax. 
punched in the butt. I don't know how much longer I can take all this whacked out, Jock. But you do look good in mud. Jax. Why is cracking Jax here? Like, where does he rank in the kind of street talking black guy comic relief characters? I actually have this exact same point written down here. Because yeah. I started kind of going, going through them. You got like LJ and Resi 2, Martin Lawrence's Terrence and Nothing to Lose. In Not Another Teen Movie, there's a guy literally called Token Black Guy, which whose job it is, it was to shout, damn, <laughs> shit, you know? Um, and it's quite funny. Chris Tucker, of course, made a career out of it. A shrill, wacky cop in Rush Hour, in Money Talks, uh, Ruby in The Fifth Element. Shout out to the exact opposite of this character, Samuel L. Jackson. Stephen in Django Unchained. Uh, yeah. Oh man, because he puts on an act of being a frail, dim-witted, subservient butler whilst actually being sharpishly observant, calculating and more intelligent than the main villain, uh, DiCaprio Calvin Candy, advising him on what to think, all to maintain his powerful position as the second in command of the manor. Fucking great film, masterful, satisfying. Now let's get back to this film. <laughs> <laughs> and then go watch Django. Yeah. Raidens reach the temple of the elder gods who fob them off and say, stop bothering us. You deal with it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Raiden, you have three questions. Are you really the elder gods? <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? Yes. You? Yes. Thank you. Come again. <laughs> Uh, I was like, you know, if you don't play by the rules, uh, there's no consequence. They just said, you deal with it. And I was like, uh, what's the point of having rules? Ah, one of them is in cahoots with Khan. Uh, El uh, Shinnok. That's supposed to be Shinnok. The da. Uh, I, I, like, he's not even wearing red. Mm. And I, I, I just want to point out how bad this casting is when the da <laughs> 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 is about... Eight inches taller than the all-powerful Emperor of Outworld. Is this like uh, Rey Mysterio telling referee Nick Patrick what's what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, that's bad. James Remar, his wig, what's happening? Because <laughs> oh. obviously Christopher Lambert, he's in a wig, you know. But like his one, it's, it's so cheap and his outfit is so plain as well like he says okay I'll, I'll give up my immortality so I can fight with the lads you know and he he flips out onto the screen and he's got a new haircut yeah <laughs> and he's got a vest like it's a plain vest and plain jocks there's no you know baubles or necklaces or you know bangles or accoutrements or whatever but I didn't expect to hear him <laughs> talk of bangles and baubles in a <laughs> yeah. Mortal Kombat review. <laughs> it, 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 just, it looks so shit. Like the budget was two really thirds does. bigger. It's like, right, so uh, Raiden, you are the all-powerful god of thunder. Do you want to give up your powers for mankind? And it's like, yes, okay. You will now become Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> state of them and it's like it's 1998 <laughs> yeah don't piss me off don't, Jared. don't piss me off jared <laughs> oh, what's that noise i think raiden's coming <laughs> elder god <laughs> start smashing uh, midgets with his guitar <laughs> oh with his loot <laughs> Hey, Stat Nuts! Would you call me? Stat Nuts! You know who you're talking to? Yeah, you, Stat Nuts! Oh, oh my god! It's amazing because the director is the original director of photography, so you think he'd have an eye for this stuff? Maybe it's like the coffee guy is now the director of photography. Ah. Yeah. Um, there's a quickie invasion scene with a ton of human extras, like armored ninjas on horses. And I was like, that looks good. Well, no, it doesn't look good, but it is <laughs> nice that you got it. Yeah. You know, they bring a bunch of people ready for a battle, and then there's no battle. Joe Khan shows up because look how many horses I've got, and everyone fucks off. Eight, <laughs> eight horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of horses. All right, bye. Uh, Math, what happens in the rest of this film? And in, in just in general, <laughs> this is how far you got. It's the life. The life drained out of me. You're up to Sindel Yellen. How is she getting on? What's what's she up to? Well, Shao Khan's like. Well, I just thought I'd just see what was happening because I've got Katana. My dad's a bit grumpy, so I thought I'd kill Raiden. And that's going to be really hard because Raiden's a thunder... Raiden's no longer a thunder god. Oh, sweet. My dad's going to be thrilled. <laughs> I'm going to have orange juice. I'm going to have fizzy. Oh, maybe I'll even have a pizza or two. Oh, me and me dad, we're going to hang out. 
And then Sindel's like, ah, I'm going to yell and scream. And they're like, if we use our power of friendship and love, we can make a portal. Friendship? And would you know it, that actually works. Yeah, uh, Sindel calls on Noob Cybot to have a fight with Raiden. I tell you, the Blu-ray transfer has not been kind to this fight. Oh, my God. Um, obviously, uh, Dexter's dad is too old and he's not able to do flips. Too crypto fascist. But it's like, hey, we will get this uh, 20-year-old lad with brown hair. In. <laughs> <laughs> and we will just like fill him in, in close. We'll even show you his face once or twice. And uh, no one will care because we've already gotten your money. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, fans. Oh, a uh, good bit of trivia note. Who is that guy, the Raiden stunt double? That's Ray Park from episode one. That's Darth Maul. Ah. Yes, and he would play Rugal in the King of Fighters film, a tour de farce, <laughs> oh, as covered it just by me and up. Abbott Muscles. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> God, I had fun laughing at that. Just starts blah, blah, just starts shooting everybody all of a sudden. And then there's like a huge brawl to the back, essentially, right here. <laughs> Liu Kang goes to break out Katana. Who shows up? Baraka. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> Big melty face on him. Head like a melted wheelie bin, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking state of him. Um, 30 million budget. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the Halloween mask he got. This is literally the worst. <laughs> like, maybe there's some worse in, like, low-budget shows from, like, the 80s and 90s. But for a Hollywood movie with a budget. And to make things even worse, our hero, Liu Kang, comes in to rescue the damsel. And she's there in a cage. And she knows that there's baddies here. Because she's been in here for ages. And she waits until... This tar cotton warrior covered in blades and teeth Weon, yeah. comes out. And then she goes, Earth a trap. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have told him that the second he walked in the room, careful Liu Kang, it's a trap. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll give you one positive of it, Steve. Besides it being very short. A Wipeout 2097 track is used. The Future Sound of London. We have explosives. Okay. And I, I flipped oh. for that. Okay. You know. Earlier in the film, a scene we cruelly left out because we're such horrible bastards, is Shao Kahn addressing his generals, Mataro. So oh, yeah, Rain, yeah. And, uh, Rain, Purple Rain. And he's like, Rain is like, I've, I've killed like four billion people, who cares? And then Shao Kahn, because his dad just yelled at him, goes, did you make them beg for your lives before you killed them? And Rain's like, <laughs> what? You tell me that? I don't know, whatever. Like, I, no, I didn't. I'm really sorry. And he goes, Rrr! it'll never happen again. And there's this shot of him going into the pit and then flume, flume, flume. In the ship Baraka fight, in the same location, Liu Kang kicks him off the cage and then Baraka takes a Mick Foley bump off the top and they use, <laughs> use the same shot as Rain Gun down. Fucking Jeez. hell. Because it wasn't cheap. They went, you know what? This doesn't look cheap enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. reuse footage. Oh my God. Yeah, sorry. Just right at the end of this scene. <laughs> Shiva. When's the last time you've seen someone get jobbed out this badly? Oh. What happened there? Lou knocks off Baraka and he falls into the pit and pff, gar, And then Shiva comes in and she's like, I'm going to get you. Gadget. <laughs> in, in this voice. And then they basically cut the like cable that's holding the cage and it just falls on her and she just goes, Bleh. <laughs> So parked there. <laughs> yeah, and, and then that's it. Fucking jobbed. The date's over. The baby phases regroup. They're shocked to learn Raiden's dad is an elder god. It was like, well, yeah, he's the god of thunder. Uh. Yeah, they all act like it's a big deal, but... And he could act. That's how we knew he was a god. <laughs> <laughs> but the kicker is Shao Kahn is his brother, which is not canon in the games, unless you count Mortal Kombat versus DC, which is not canon. Raiden's brother is Fujin, huh? god of wind from MK4. 
Oh, you know, it's the one Mortal Kombat I've never played. Oh, I encourage everybody, though, don't need to play Mortal Kombat 4. It's not aged very well. But for the love of God, please see the N64 endings because obviously on the other consoles like the Dreamcast and the PS1, they could show FMV. The N64 did not like FMV. So they just used the models to do the scenes and they are wonderfully bad. Oh. Wait, do you mean the, like the N64 in-game models? Yeah, just use those and make them do stuff. And oh, yeah. That sounds awesome, actually. <laughs> yeah. You need to watch them. Is there anyone that stands out to you for the endings? All right. There's one where, oh, what's his name? Some of these like late 90s newcomer people, they all merge together because they're all just boring and Mo white. Cap. Um Jim Jam. <laughs> yeah, Jim, Jim Jam. Thank you. Jim Jam is... Um, He's on a big cliff with a Scraping Sonya the Blade. bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Jim Jam, that famous small combat character. Oh, Jared, that's it. Oh, um, the Jeff Jared. Jared. <laughs> going, I'm going to take you in. And he goes, never. The red dragons will live forever. And then he goes for like a running attack. And then so Sonya just like dodges slightly to the left. And he flies off the cliff and goes, dummy, dummy, dummy. <laughs> it's like Dana Brooke. <laughs> The Black Dragon died with Kano. You're the last one, Jarek. Never! Awesome. Brilliant. Really cool. Uh, I just want to go back to one scene earlier. Oh, There's a scene where Katana is talking to her ma. <laughs> <laughs> Sindel is like facing like six o'clock, right? Okay. And then Raiden comes in at seven o'clock. Yeah. And rather than turning... 30 degrees to her right and facing him she goes like no and she does like a 330 degree spin the (sighs) other Mm. way so that she can do a dramatic face off and and she's like (laughs) ha she's fucking shit she's one of the worst actors i've ever seen um what was the bit where she she gets on a i don't want to say go-go table she gets on some kind of plinth or table and she starts twirling (laughs) That's this bit, which is, is coincides with Jade going, that's right. Like all the women that Vince Russo scripted for, I cannot be trusted. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. <laughs> and she starts just spinning for no reason. And then Jade's like, oh, okay, I'll just leave then. <laughs> now seems a really good opportunity to leg it, not get attacked, which I thought was funny in a not intended way. It cannot be. Oh, but it can. And it is. Oh, it's revealed that Jade is a double agent. You never should have trusted someone from outward. <laughs> but her betrayal is short-lived as Khan murders her for failing to take the goodies out, throwing her into a gargoyle like Reptile in the first. Remar, he can't do another fight scene. He barely escaped the first. <laughs> so Khan hadoukens him, killing him, but also making it four on four. It's the Survivor Series. <laughs> Teams of four strove to survive. Who we got? <laughs> Team captains Luke Kang versus Shao Kahn. Katana versus Sindel. Jax versus Motaro. Which leaves Sonya versus Rain. And she's even like, leftovers are fine with me. Yeah. I'm, so what you're saying is there's four main events. That translates as there's no main event. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> A main event in every corner. (laughs) (laughs) Leftovers are fine with me. Time for the big finish. Take it away, Steve. Oh, my God. (sighs) All right. So, uh, Liu Kang for his one-on-one battle with the big boss, Shao Kahn. Of course, he is getting battered because he's wildly outpowered by the Emperor of Outworld because he's just a man. However... His time in the desert with Nightwolf helps out and he figures out his animality. And what does he turn into? The shittest <laughs> dragon you will ever see. And then Shao Kahn turns into the shittest Hydra you will ever see. And they fly up into the air and an already horrific movie finally becomes unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> they have a terrible CG fight. They fucking peck at each other like a couple of hungry birds. And then they fall to the ground. And thank God they ran out of money because they turned back into their human form. It's 1997 CGI. <laughs> and God does it look it. And even better, then they fall off the little temple thing they're at. But they're really big. 
So they fall the equivalent of two foot to them, and then they <laughs> turn into other forms. <laughs> oh, by the way, he definitely used punch in the third round. He can't do the animality. <laughs> <laughs> Sure Khan doesn't have an animality, by the way. Um, Liu Kang down and up sweet range. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I actually did like this animality fight because he just went full bollocks. It's like the film, at this point, they know it's trash, so just throw it, do it. Have a laugh. Oh, no, nah, I've seen everything. I love that they bring out the Elder Gods and they're like, hey, you guys cheated in Mortal Kombat. Your sentence is Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> Wind person goes, the fate of the universe shall be settled as it should be. And then the other dude goes, in Mortal Kombat, syncing up with the theme playing. <laughs> I art on now. The fate of the universe will be decided as it should be. In Mortal Kombat. Do you know what would have made it even better if the elder gods would have sang the Mortal Kombat <laughs> yeah. in cappella, yeah. <laughs> and they started doing like robot dances and things like that? The fire god's got his keyboard. <laughs> And Kang wins with a flash kick, pretty much, and that's good enough to send Shokan and the baddies packing. He ends the first movie with a fireball. Did he forget how to fucking do it? Yeah, four forward eye punch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he literally just ends it with a back kick. Like, y- yep, that's it. <laughs> just a high kick, that's it. Just a kick. Yeah. Final scene, baby faces get the S rank super happy ending, bringing Raiden back to life. Uh, you're an elder god. Any chance of bringing Johnny back? I was just about to say that. (laughs) And Sonya doesn't fucking care. You know, like, she's like, Raiden! Rather than being, um, do you want to bring Johnny back, lads? You know, like the person who, uh, in kayfabe, I've fallen in love with since the first movie. Does he just pretend I'm on the phone? I was like, shh, you're breaking up. Shh, shh, it's I. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going through a tunnel. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so let's dig into the aftermath. I shall advise you for as long as my mortality allows. But have no doubt, you are up to the task. Then together, let us begin. Welcome to the aftermath. Math, mate! I'm so sorry. (laughs) What'd you make of Mortal Kombat Annihilation? I think every person who liked a film as a kid who brings up in conversation years later and they go, I really liked name a film here. And all their friends go, what are you on about? That's a horrible film. Are you sure? And you go, yeah. I think everybody should go back and watch that film and realize how you learn from your mistakes and how wrong you can be <laughs> at some times in your life when you don't know any better. And if you're going to do it, you might as well do it with two lovely lads because it's a lot better than doing it by Aww. yourself. Bloody hell. If you like Mortal Kombat 1, but you didn't like the quality acting, the little, little lines that you remember, like 500 sunglasses or hello, baby, uh, any of the good performances, any of the lovely scenery and on-location shoots they did, and instead replaced by a bunch of people running around with very little motivation other than bad stuff's happening, but we don't have the budget to show it, then <laughs> my God, is this the film for you? So uh, 10 on 10? 10 on 10, yes. Uh, what do you think, people? Uh, this movie, uh, failure on nearly every level. Nearly? That's the best <laughs> review it's got. <laughs> Writing, shit. Casting, shit. Costumes, shit. Acting, special effects. CGI, the sets, the action scenes, the fight, the payoff, the plot, the scripting. Like, Absolutely everything in this movie is awful. It's rightfully remembered as one of the worst video game movies of all time. The only positive that I can say (gasps) is that it's so bad that there's fun to be had in watching it and having a laugh about it afterwards. 
It's still not as bad as Samurai Cop 2. Oh, wow. That's something. Yeah. Put, Second put it on. Worst movie <laughs> V1 has ever seen. I kind of wonder what. Because I was watching this and, it, like, pretty instantly, whenever the Scorpion fight happened, I was like, this is painful for me to watch. This hurts me as a big, smelly Mortal Kombat mark. So, like, I reckon if you're not a fan of this, you could have great fun enjoying how everything is so crap, you know? But as a Mortal Kombat fan, it hurts, Stephen. <laughs> Oh my god, it pains me to see Mortal Kombat like this. And Ed Boon, when he was asked about what do you think of the movie, he was like, this is the lowest moment of the entire franchise. And then Homer Simpson appeared and goes, the lowest moment of the franchise so far. (laughs) (laughs) Brilliant. How was it received? How you'd expect unanimous caustic disapproval. Even though it was widely lambasted, writer Brent Friedman was more relieved that it was over. Like, it's out there. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> and considering the troubled production and having seen how rough it looked at one stage, he thought it ended up okay. <laughs> Released November 21st, 1997, it opened to number one with 16 million, eventually taking in 51 million on a budget of 30 million, so it meant it turned a profit. So that's something. New Line even threw them a party where they were all smiles. <laughs> Why was it so bad? Like, I mean, besides the scripting garbage, the acting characterization, basic costumes, general look, all garbage. Three foundational problems. One, John Leonetti was a first time director and it was a 30 million sci-fi fantasy to boot and he wasn't making his days like he was falling behind schedule and he found it very difficult to navigate the process in general like scenes were getting cut or trimmed down significantly like there was a big action set piece around the middle of the film where all the lads band together and break out jacks out of a prison and that was cut entirely so all of the work you put into that everything you shot can't useless you know number two cheapening out by not doing reshoots so they had to do a lot of kind of plot band-aids in voiceover but like, all this film is, is exposition, is plot. It's like, go here, do this, so we can go there and do that, you know? You know? It's a game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a terrible game. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, the movie was rushed to meet its deadline. The producer even admitted the effects you see in the movie are not the final effects. Kasanoff said, I never anticipated that someone would take the movie and go, that's good enough. He says, we weren't done. We never finished that movie. But the studio said, we don't care. We we sacrificed quality for business. Yeah. I suppose the other thing is that Mortal Kombat Annihilation. It was aimed squarely at hardcore fans. Insane fan service. 21 characters from the game. It's Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. (laughs) (laughs) So it just means a lot of them only got one poorly done scene. And never seen again. It's the cinematic equivalent of the WrestleMania 25, 25 Diva Battle Royal, <laughs> <laughs> which Tristratus was very right to decline. One positive this is the most accurate video game to movie adaptation ever made. It, it is rigidly close to the source material, and it's like a modern game, like cutscene fight, cutscene fight. You know, yeah. this is Mortal Kombat 3 the game the movie (laughs) (laughs) Uh, if you ask me there's only one thing that you could have done in a sequel to make this better what's up Jim Jam Jared Did you know Quan Chi was cut from the movie? He would have been at the very end, sharing a laugh with Shinnok, setting up a third film. Scripted, shot, but cut entirely, the deleted scenes never been released, sad face. But here he is on the Laserdisc artwork front and centre. Look at him there. Isn't that mental? And here's some random photos of him. He was just a Thai extra who couldn't speak English. You just need to laugh. But he was scrubbed just like this movie sequel. Speaking of... A few lads actually want to know, obviously there is talk of a third film, but this was widely lambasted and they immediately cancelled plans for a third film. And by 2001, New Line's rights to the films expired, so Kasanoff and Threshold were free to make a third film themselves. Obviously never got made, but do you want to hear the pitches of what it could have been? Yes, please. Jim Jam. 
Johnny Cage is resurrected by Raiden to fight against Quan Chi, the malevolent sorcerer in MK4. Get Christopher Lambert and Lyndon Ashby, possibly carry Shang Tsung uh, back, recast Sonya with possibly Trish Stratus. Oh. <laughs> Okay. She's a terrible actress. I, she, yeah. <laughs> oh, even in animated form. So she would have been perfect for this, you mean? Cool pet dog. Sorry. I can't sneeze a little rusty. <laughs> Another script penned by Drew McWeeny had Sub Zero as a top baby face looking for fighters to compete against Quan Chi and Shang Tsung, the deadly alliance. Featuring a guy made of acid called Mandalay. Fighters made of silk, a grim reaper dude, brother of the shadow, and a group of fighters who megazord into a giant called Steamroller. A a dude made of silk? (laughs) (laughs) You know that he, he like, googled it. He's like, oh, lads, spider silk, gram for gram, stronger than titanium. (laughs) Yeah, that is a... This is well. That sounds shit, Jay. Does he have to pull it out of his arse? <laughs> <laughs> like a real spider. <laughs> what would make someone think that the answer to get a movie franchise back on track is to have a bunch of characters that are not in the games? That sounds really bad. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe save it with the big finish. Sonya faces Johnny Cage's ghost to free his soul, and Yank Sub Zero faces the original Sub Zero Prime. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sonya, it's good to see you, punch. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, this storyline of heel elder god Quan Chi teaming up with Shang Tsung with no Liu Kang around is the plot to 2002's Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. We must act now. We must stop this deadly alliance. Just on making a third film, uh, suddenly it was 2006 and they blame Hurricane Katrina for the film not starting production. It was like, oh, all of our sets, they blew down. They're over there. We're over there. They're in Bill's house. (laughs) (laughs) Damn you, Fujin. (laughs) In 2009, Midway filed for bankruptcy, probably for paying Buffer. What was that? 100 million for Ready to Rumble. Oh, my God. Uh, And were bought out by Warner Brothers for 33 million. It was a natural pairing as Midway had produced the crossover fighter um, Mortal Kombat versus DC that year for them. Uh, With the Midway deal came the Mortal Kombat film rights which Kasanov countersued, saying before his movie's input, they were just stock characters, and now they're fully fleshed out characters and were worth $40 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Two billion per character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, delusional. Uh, they ended up settling out of court with an NDA. For, uh, he only made $20 billion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, And so ends the Kasanoff era of Mortal Kombat. But the story doesn't end there. What's in store for Scorpion, Sub-Zero, the Outworld, and Earthwhelm? That's a story for another day. Oh, I've got a couple of bits of trivia for you. Okay. Mortal Kombat 1, Shang Tsung, he absorbs a soul, it swirls into his eye. It's very much like uh, Hitchcock's Vertigo. does the same thing. In Shazam, they play Mortal Kombat. It's uh, Raiden vs. Cage. And later, he uses the package check on Dr. Savannah. Ah, Just nice. Bow. Mm. And, he, and he has, like, l- lightning hands. He, he, he does the song, hands, lighten them with my hands. <laughs> That's good shit. Yeah. Ooh, shout out to Strider HD. He deep faked Van Damme's face onto Johnny Cage for the Mortal Kombat 1 movie. That's kind of awesome. It looks great. Those were five hundred dollar sunglasses, asshole. Mortal Kombat One's Sub Zero was played by Francois Petit, <laughs> <laughs> who became a doctor in the WWF. He was the attending for Foley's Hell in a Cell, Splicey, and telling Delo and Mark Henry that Terry isn't pregnant. She never was. I examined her. I know she was not pregnant. And here's him doing some crazy spinal adjustments to Ribbly in Beyond the Mat. Five minutes after your adrenaline shuts down, you can't stand up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, in Ready Player One, the Easter egg room is a giant Mortal Kombat shrine. Oh, I've seen that movie and I don't remember that. Because it was shite. 
And, of course, there's Goro in it as well, but it's actually a, a woman dressed up in costume. Oh, and Thor Ragnarok. Thor, Marvel's God of Thunder. He does a <laughs> torpedo attack. Like Raiden. he goes... <laughs> <laughs> that would have done it. <laughs> yeah. would have made him. Did you see that? Movie made, what, 2.9 billion or something? <laughs> if you put that in, pushes you over the 3 yep. billion mark, lads. Yep. You get that Mortal Kombat money. <laughs> That's it. Thor yells... I'm the god of thunder. And then Chris Weinberg goes, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) Brilliant. Just want to say a massive thanks to Luke Owen and his in-depth behind-the-scenes notes oh. from his book called Lights, Camera, Game Over, How Video Game Movies Get Made. It goes through the famous video game movies like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Super Mario, failed Gears of War and Halo movies. Uh, so you get interviews with like Paul Anderson, the Tomb Raider dude, Street Fighter guys. Great read. It sounds good, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really good. Jeez. He's a good lad, that Luke Owen. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, the same Luke Owen from WrestleTalk. That's right. Yeah, cheers, mate. There are other video website people about wrestling. Just mm, go protect my employer. So that does it for this episode of the Nugger You Film Reviews. Thank you so much. Well, no, no, fuck you, Andrew Busey. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you bollocks. You're banned. <laughs> but we will continue to take your pledge. <laughs> uh, how do you think that one went, mate? Uh, that was, I mean, like, terrible, but that's what makes it good, right? Hopefully. Fingers crossed yeah. there. I don't know. Can we escape the swirling doom? <laughs> or uh, how are you getting on, Matt? How are you, man? I'm all right. I mean... If someone's paid for that, do they like listen to this and go, I actually like that film. Can I get a refund? <laughs> I thought you would like it. Oh, uh, shit. What is coming up on Botchamania, mate? The exact same content I've been putting out for over 10 years, Jay. Thank you for asking. It's uh, the funnest bit of Botchamania now is getting all those lovely cameos from people like yourself and V1. Uh-huh. And yeah. even to other one. As we read little bits from wrestlers' books, as the televised wrestling has been pretty crap the past year. So that's been fun. We've got some more lovely cameos coming up, people, that I don't reveal in case they change their minds and decide that they would rather shove bees up their ass. Uh, but that's all coming <laughs> to a Botchmania channel near you. I'm also still working on the Five Star Wrestling documentary, Ooh. which I'm looking forward to because I watch lots of YouTubers talk about serious events and go, wow, that looks really good. What if someone talked about one of the most rubbish, overhyped, spectacular failures in the history of UK wrestling? And I go, oh, I need to do that because no one else is going to do it. <laughs> so we have all that to look forward to and more. And what about yourself, Mr. OSWs? What are we up to these days? Hot dog and grandstanding. Hot dog and grandstanding. Ultimate warrioring, shitty movieing, <laughs> twitching, watch longing. Yeah, that's about it. That's it. <laughs> you know, Subway, Mega Meats. Mega Meeting, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Different yeah. flavoured Cokes. Yeah, fucking horrific times we live in. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully next time uh, we have to get to see you in person as well. Yeah, that'd be that awesome. That would be yeah. fantastic. Uh, until then, should we end this the same way Scorpion does when he gets Katana in Annihilation and just... Uh, Sucker! <laughs> You've watched it. You can't unwatch it. (laughs) Stay tuned for more OSW films of interest. And so it's a goodbye from B1. Take a fucking boo. And Mabu. Take his boo. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. (laughs) Do you want to do like a Mortal Kombat one? I don't think so. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Toasty!